So in this game engine programming list, I have been waving my hands a little bit using three-dimensional coordinates to do things in two-dimensional space. And I've mentioned the word homogeneous coordinates a few times. And now it's time, I think, to explain them so that we can use them further in what we're going to do, especially when we get to the graphics playlist for sure. But anyway, homogeneous coordinates. I don't know why it took me so long to wrap my head around this. It's not a very difficult concept. If you think about how easy it is to learn X and Y coordinates in regular algebra, uh, adding the word homogeneous probably just scared me off simply because the word homogeneous has five syllables in it and it sounds really technical and oh, it's going to take my brain cycles to get used to. But actually, don't let them scare you. I think what I'm about to explain, I hope is straightforward. If not, there's plenty of resources out on the web. Okay, so you can see here I have what looks like a number line, but it's not a number line. I'm not going to call it a number line. We're going to call it a one-dimensional space. <clears throat> and there's two people in this one-dimensional space. This is Bill, labeled with a B, and this is Ted, labeled with a T. And the origin of this one-dimensional space is right here. Now you can see the basis vector that defines the one-dimensional space, okay? Now, <clears throat> this it, that's actually really important in linear algebra. I could, I could take that basis vector and point it this way. I could point it this way. I could point it this way. And whichever way I point my basis vector, it would define this one-dimensional space, in this case here, or this case here, or this case here. And the only reason why I aligned it up to what would look like the x axis or a number line is simply because you and I are used to reading left to right so I mainly just made it horizontal so uh, it's easier to explain and for you to understand and that's because that's what we're used to. So Bill and Ted were born into this one-dimensional space and like you and me we were born into this three-dimensional space and we understand three dimensions quite nicely but it could be possible that we would be born into a two-dimensional space and if we didn't know any better we would be very happy in 2D and that's true or that is the case for Bill and Ted here they were born in this one-dimensional space they can move any way they want to up and down this one-dimensional space uh, but they can't go any other direction nor do they know nor can they conceptualize going any other direction because that is all they know now it might help you at this point to pause the video and go rent the invention of lying it's a good movie but basically in that movie nobody has ever told a lie and nobody knows or understands what a lie is and then all of a sudden somebody invents it and it just throws everything everyone for a loop that or you could watch men in black i think it's two i can't remember which one men in black where the universe is on orion's belt and it turns out that the universe is some little ball on a cat's collar if i remember correctly anyway so we don't really understand how big or small our world is or this existence in the universe and that there's only so much we understand and that's the case with Bill and Ted they don't understand two dimensions nor do they understand three dimensions they only just understand their one dimension Ted cannot go around Bill nor can Bill go around Ted nor can they go through each other because that would be a very violent experience now I know I'm talking a lot about this one dimensional space and that they only understand the one dimensional space but that's key so what's going on here is, is when we talk about homogeneous coordinates in four dimensions, all of a sudden it's this dimensional space that you and I cannot conceptualize, nor do we understand, but yet this, the math still works. However, going from 2D to 1D, we can understand that, and going from 3D to 2D, we can understand that, because we understand and can con conceptualize those dimensions. Anyway. Maybe I'm beating a dead horse. Alright, so in this world, everybody obeys linear algebra laws. Um, religiously maybe, <laughs> perfectly, whatever you want to do, staunchly. And so Bill, his position is described as a vector negative 1 times the basis vector for this dimension, this dimensional space. It's negative 1 times the basis vector v. Well, if I take negative 1 and times it by this vector, then we'll get another vector describing Bill's position in the one-dimensional space. So I'm drawing the vector down here a little bit below because I don't want to overwrite my line. Uh, Ted, as well, his position is 2 times the basis vector. So here's our basis vector v. And if we do that, then 
2 times our basis vector v would yield a vector like so, describing Ted's location. Now, Bill and Ted love each other, but they also like to maintain distance. So they are happy as long as there is a length of 3 between them. So 1, 2, 3. Here we go. 1, 2, 3. As long as that distance exists, they are both content. And Ted is generally happy just to hang out wherever he's at, but Bill likes to change up the scenery once in a while. So when Bill decides he wants to move to, let's say, negative 4, he has to take his current location and transform it to where he wants to be using the rules of linear algebra. He simply cannot say add negative 3 to my location because negative 3 is a scalar. It could go this way, it could go that way, it could go any way. It, it doesn't really tell us a direction. So he always has to do negative 3 times the direction which is his current uh, location. Negative 1 times the basis vector. The vector gives us the direction. All right, that's important. Anyway, so in this case, in order for Bill to get to negative 4, he has to transform his location by multiplying his current location by a scalar value. A scalar times a vector yields another vector, as we've seen before. And so 4 times negative 1 would place Bill at negative 4 times our basis vector v. Well, that's good and dandy, but Ted, remember, Bill and Ted, in order to be happy, Ted has to be three units away from Bill, and also Ted has to be on the right side because he cannot go through Bill to get to his left side. So if Bill decides he wants to move to negative 4, then Ted needs to move to 1, 2, 3. Ted needs to put himself at Bill's old location, which is negative 1. The fact that it's Bill's old location is irrelevant, though. He just wants to maintain a distance of 3 from Bill. Now, this is rather inconvenient for Ted because Ted's lazy. And in Ted's ideal world, he would simply take this scalar or this transform that Bill is using and multiply himself by that same number. But if he does that, that's going to put Ted at 8 times the basis vector v which would be off to your right quite far and probably out of the screen. Maybe, maybe not. It could extend the line, I suppose. But then that, the distance between the two would be far too great, and they would be very unhappy that they were so far apart. All right, so major problem. Every time Bill wants to move, Ted has to move with him. Ted has to maintain a distance of three, but then Ted also has to think, which he doesn't like. We've seen that multiplying by the same scalar as what Bill is using is not going to work. So Ted has to think, what scalar do I need to transform myself by in order to make a linear combination? That's what we're doing here. We're doing scalars times vectors, linear combinations. Anyway, to do a linear combination, what scalar do I need to use to put myself at negative 1? Well, that's that's basically saying... His current location of 2 times some variable x is equal to negative 1. While doing some simple algebra, we can see that x is equal to negative 1 half. All right, but this is far too much algebra than Ted wants to do. It's such a pain. Anyway, but he goes along with it this time and transforms his current location by negative 1 half. And that makes his new location uh, negative 1 times the basis vector v. All right, now that works out and that's dandy. Well, eventually, Bill decides he wants to move around like 20 times a day, and Ted has had enough. And Ted's decided he doesn't want to move, nor is he going to do the current, the, the calculations necessary to maintain the proper scalar. Ted says, Bill, if you can figure out a way where you can multiply me by the same transform as you're multiplying yourself, then I'll move. That's fine. And in fact, Ted says you could even, if you could construct a train, it'd be nice if we had a train in this one-dimensional world that would move both of us at the same time, at the same speed, and I don't have to worry about it. You decide where you want to move. Just hit me with that same transform, and I'll be happy. Okay, so this is where we'll pause our story 
and move on to the next video in the playlist to see what Bill comes up with in order to satisfy Ted's demands.